Hello, Cricketers, and welcome to Cricketing with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda, and thank you so much for joining me today. In today's tutorial, I will be showing you the seven essential items needed in order for, to do sublimation. Now, I'm also gonna show you three optional items that you may or may not need or want, but I'm gonna share the full thing with you. There are so many people who are ready to get into sublimation and Santa, we know, is right around the corner. For most of you, Santa might be you. For some of you, Santa might be your significant other. For some of you, Santa might be a surprise waiting to happen. We don't know. Well, just in case Santa is around the corner and he is ready or she is ready for you, I want you to know the seven things you'll tell them. I need these seven things in order to get ready for sublimation. So let's before we get into that process, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Turn on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week without fail. All right, so before I show you the list, let me show you some of the things that I've done just using sublimation. So this is a canvas that I've done. I took polyester fabric and I covered just a regular plain canvas board. This is a sublimated phone case. It's my, me and my uh, children, my very, very, very tall son. Okay. Um, what else have I done? I've done so many things with sublimation. I've done ornaments. I've done keychains. I've done just a ton of different things. I've done magnets, um, but I wanted you to see what the sublimated, you know, the end result looks like. So these are two things that I've done that I wanted to share with you. This is the full list. I've already put checks next to them because I've gone through and I've shown you in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you every single thing. So let's look at the list. Number one, you'll need a sublimation printer or a printer that can be converted. So if you buy a printer that's already a sublimation designated printer, they do cost a lot of money but there are options number two you'll need sublimation paper i'm going to show you different brands you'll need sublimation ink i've only tried one brand and i love it love um number four you'll need sublimation blanks i'll show you a variety number five you'll need a heat press that will reach 400 degrees or higher i will show you three different heat presses Number six, you'll need heat resistant tape. I prefer the Cricut brand. I'll put a list of everything I use for sublimation down in the, in the uh, description box below with every single link that I've used personally to purchase. Um, number seven, you'll need butcher paper or parchment paper. I would definitely say heavy on the butcher paper. Parchment paper is, uh, if you can't find butcher paper, try that. And then the optional items, heat resistant gloves, a tape dispenser, Ask Sherry. She saw me drop my tape dispenser three times in one video. All right. And then a USB that is directly connected to your device. All right. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's look at number one and you will see me go through the checklist step by step for you. And hopefully this is helpful for you. Helpful for you. All right. Let's get started. Number one on our list of Seven items needed for sublimation. Number one is a sublimation printer or a printer that can be converted. I'm going to show you two different printers. All right, the first one that I'm gonna show you is my Epson EcoTank 2760, okay? It does have Wi-Fi capabilities. Um, you can see that it has um, space for four different color cartridges. It does have an on-screen display. Um, one thing that makes this one different now, the Epson EcoTank 2760 is very, very similar to the Epson EcoTank 2720. The 2720 is the most popular, I would say, of the two models. The only thing that makes this one different is, well, there are two main things. This one can do double-sided printing, which I don't think you'll need. So if you're able to find a 2720, get that one. Um, also, this one has external storage capabilities. So if you have photos stored and you want to print them and you have them saved on an SD card, you can insert the card here. The 2720 does not have that capability. I purchased this printer back in July. And as you can see, the ink is, my ink levels are still very, very high. And I have done a lot of sublimation printing. Okay. So this is one option. Let me show you option two. Before I show you the other printer that I have, and, and I said this is one option, let me show you option two. I don't mean that, there are plenty of options. You have, as long as the printer can be converted to sublimation, you need, you need to do your research, do your due diligence, you will be able to use it. Um, 
One thing I wanted to note about this one, it is capable of printing up to eight and a half by um, 14 sheets, okay? So take that into consideration when you're thinking about a printer. If you think, you know, you wanna be able to print bigger, you'll have to go with a different option. But this one, just like the 2720, they will, the sheet of the sheets of paper that you can use are up to eight and a half by 14. Now let me show you another printer that can be converted to sublimation. This is another printer that I have, and as you can tell, it is still unopened. This is the Epson Workforce 7820. And the reason that I purchased this one is because it is capable of being converted to, for sublimation and is capable of printing up to 13 by nine um, sheets. The only reason I have not opened this one yet is because you know you have to do uh, some things to convert it. You have to have a conversion kit and it, you know I had to purchase these from, Am not Amazon, eBay. And I just haven't taken the time to do that yet because I need to have my mind right for it. And my mind is definitely not right for it yet. But this is another option. As you can tell, this one is quite big. It's much bigger than the 2760 that I have on my desk. Um, and so when I do decide to open this box and get it converted, I'll need a designated space for it too. As you can see, it's on the floor in my crafting room and it's gonna be here until I'm ready for it, okay? So I've shown you two different printers and so we can check off sublimation printer because when it's time for you to make your purchase or make your decision about the printer you will use, it is important that you do your due diligence. Do you have a designated space? Do you know what you'll need to do in order to sublimate? So I'm gonna go ahead and check off number one. I've shown you the Epson 2760, and I've shown you, I've told you about the difference between the Epson 2760 and the 2720. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and check that off. Okay. Number two, you will need sublimation paper. Since I'm already showing this one right here, and I know that I wanted to be able to convert it and print bigger images, I will need big paper, big sublimation paper at that. Okay, let me show you what this one looks like. Because I bought this printer with the goal of being able to print bigger images, I knew that I would need bigger paper. So this is one, this is a, the package of paper that I purchased for the, um, to use with this printer. It is the 13 by 19, 105 gram ASA paper. I had to put a cover on the front because I couldn't get my address off. So I just put a piece of card stock right there on top. All right, there are 150 sheets in this package. As you can see, it's, it's also unopened. I didn't have a reason to open it because I haven't opened the printer yet. But I know when I get ready to print, I'll have everything ready. Okay, so that is the sublimation paper that I intend to use for my 13 by 19 prints. Let me go back and show you the other, some other options for sublimation paper. All right, let's look at some other paper options. I use, right now I use a sub sublimation paper. I use the 125 gram weight of paper. There are 110 sheets that come in this box. I have had excellent results with this paper. Um, I absolutely love it and I don't have any complaints about it. I've heard people say that um, sometimes they get a residue on their sublimated items, but I haven't experienced that. Um, this is what the paper looks like. open it up on one side it's just a clear sheet and on the other side it says a sub of course this is the side you print on so when you feed it through your printer you actually feed it through so that the word or words a sub show up they're like facing the wall so what you see is just the clear sheet and the the words are on the back Okay, so that's one page. That's the paper that I use. But when I got started, I wasn't sure. I also purchased this one, this Koala brand sublimation paper. It's 123 GSMs, 100 sheets in here. I think this one was a little more expensive than the ASA paper, but I haven't opened it. Still sealed, I haven't tried it yet. So it's just another option. So we've gone through three paper options. 
Koala brand, the A sub, 125. Oh, I call it grams. It might, be, it might not even be grams. 125. I don't know what the G is for, but I'm going to look it up. Um, and then this one, the big one, that has 150 sheets in it, you know, for 13 by 19 printing. Okay? So we can check off sublimation paper on our list because we know that we need a printer and we need sublimation paper. Let's look at sublimation ink. Okay, when I purchased my Epson 2760, it came with these four bottles of ink in the box. As you can see, they are still unopened and I cannot encourage myself to throw them away. <laughs> I cannot just say, Delana, you don't need them. Throw them away. I can't do it. So I still have them, but they are not open. So when I opened the box, I already knew that I could not use this ink. And I just don't know what else to do with it. I'm not into sales, so I don't you know, want to try to sell them. So I'm just holding on to them for now. Um, so the ink that's in my printer right now is not this, as you can tell, because this is still sealed. When you are getting ready to get into sublimation, you will need sublimation ink. So this is the only brand I've ever tried. It is called Hippo, H-I-I-P-O-O. -O. I love it. I love it. There is no other way for me to explain it. I haven't tried any other brand. I don't have anything else to compare it to. What I do know for sure is that I've gotten excellent results. I know that it lasts for a very long time. We are at the end of November. I've had this since July and I do some sort of sublimation almost every day. I have I've done a lot of sublimation. So it comes in a box like this and it says sublimation ink. Now Hippo does sell other types of ink. So when you're buying the sublimation ink, make sure that the box or your link, you know, that you're using says sublimation ink. I will put a link down below for the one that I purchased. So when I opened the box and I, you know, started to put my ink in, I had to, and I'm not going to do it, but I had to open this and just let the ink drip into each of the um, slots. So I still have some blue left in here. I still have some yellow left in here. And I still have some of this um, I don't know, it's not called red. Oh, it's called magenta. Okay. And so these these um letters on the front, they correspond to the colors that actually go into the the slot. So where it says M right there, I know that's for the magenta. So when I got ready to pour it in, I just let let the bottle just drip in until it was already filled up. Okay. So what I did when I purchased my sublimation ink, now I, I do shop a lot. I bought an extra box thinking, oh, when that runs out, I'll already have some. This is still unopened, okay? I have not, I have not opened this one yet. This box is a little bit different than this one because this one is if I, like if I'm going to convert that big printer that I just showed you, I could use these syringes to get the ink out and put it in the, the right containers. But I haven't, I haven't opened this one yet. Okay, it's still sealed. All right, so in terms of sublimation ink, same thing, do your due diligence, do research, look at reviews, you know, ask other people what they use, and then you make, a, make an informed decision. Don't just go with the masses, go with who has the best reviews maybe, or who is getting good results. Ask people, can you show me something that you've done sublimation on? So I can see if I like, you know, if you're getting good results. I personally feel like I've gotten excellent results with this, with this brand. Okay, so now we can check off Sublimation Ink. We reviewed that. All right, number four, Sublimation Blanks. This is gonna be fun, buckle up. All right, so we are ready to look at sublimation blanks, okay? In order for an item to be considered as a sublimation blank, most often it's, it's talking about the fabric um, and you're looking for high polyester count fabrics most of the time in white. 
for example, these socks, okay? These are just a pair of those no-show socks. These are 100% polyester. This is a, an example of a sublimation blank. These lanyards, they're white. I purchased these from Amazon. These are sublimation lanyards because I could, you know, use the go through the sublimation process to put an image on here. Um, these sashes, I have so many items. These sashes are 100% polyester. Let me show you what they look like. Okay, this, this is a considered as a sublimation blank, all right? Um, this pencil pouch or makeup bag or cosmetic bag is white, it's 100% polyester. I, I could use this for sublimation. Um, sometimes when I'm in Walmart, if I go in the, um, the fabric section, I'll find fabrics that are um, polyester and I'll just purchase them just because. So this one is 100% polyester and it's just a 1.5 yards of fabric and I've purchased multiples of these because whenever I see it, I buy it. Um, these mouse pads, this mouse pad is 100% polyester on top and I can do so, go through the sublimation process on these. Um, and there are other things that are not made of fabric but you, they, they are considered as sublimation blanks. For example, these ornaments. They have, I guess it's an aluminum coating or something like that, that allows you to do sub, go through the sublimation process on them. So this is a two-sided sublimation blank aluminum, um, sublimation blank um, ornament. These are luggage tags that are just one-sided luggage tags that you could go through the sublimation process. These are keychains, okay? Double-sided keychains that you would do sublimation on. Here is a cell phone case. Okay, and if you purchase a cell phone case, you would take this part out that has the aluminum backing. You would go through the sublimation process on this and then put, put the phone case together on here. Um, here is another bag of just a various size ornament that I could do sublimation on. Here is a sublimation um, clipboard, okay? I could sublimate on both sides of this. This is a sublimation puzzle. Okay, so your possibilities are endless. These are hand sanitizer holders that can be sublimated on. Um, there are mugs or um, tumblers that you can go through sublimation on. These, this is a 20 ounce tumbler that I purchased from 143vinyl.com um, that I could do sublimation on. Cricut mugs are excellent for doing sublimation on. And just like I said, the possibilities are endless. Most of the time when you purchase something that has sequins on it, you can go through sublimation. So this is an example of a pillowcase that I did sublimation on and I just, it's a picture of my family and you know, it's one of those reveal pillows. So if I were to turn it the other way, you know, like flip it up, you wouldn't be able to see it. Um, so I, you know, once you pull it back down, you it reveals the picture. Um, this is another example of um, something that I've done sublimation on. It's just a canvas. And all I did with this canvas is that I took some of the polyester fabric and I wrapped it around the canvas. I did sublimation on this, on this 100% polyester fabric and I wrapped it around just a standard canvas. Okay, so as I said, the possibilities for sublimation are endless. And I wanted you to see what some of the this is a sublimated um, ornament that I did. So I just took one of these blanks and I put my photo on top and I went through the process with it. Okay, so I think we've covered a variety of sublimation blanks. So I can go ahead and cross that off. Get my, don't see my pen, but I can use a marker and I can cross off sublimation blanks. All right, next we're gonna look at heat presses or a heat press that will reach 400 degrees. Okay, I'll show you some examples. All right, number five, heat press, a heat press that will reach 400 degrees. One of the most essential things you will need when you're ready to get started with sublimation is a heat press that will heat up to 400 degrees. There are two that I know that I actually have, well, actually there are three that I have here that I'll show you. 
Number one is a nine by nine or a Cricut Easy Press. A Cricut Easy Press is a viable option, is a very good option. It is the first heat press that I ever owned. I have a nine by nine heat press. If I turn this heat press on, I can set it to 400 degrees. I like this heat press. The only reason I needed a bigger heat press um, and, and a different heat press is because I wanted to be able to press without having to give it so much pressure. So the one downside, in my opinion, just my opinion, it doesn't matter to anyone, is that you have to give it uh, your um, object a lot of pressure sometimes, especially if you're using um, heat transfer vinyl. You have to give it a lot of pressure and I did not like that because I wasn't very good at giving consistent pressure all the way through my fabric item. The second heat press I purchased, I'll show you in a minute because I have it on a different table. This is another viable option for heat presses. This one is a StarCraft 15 by 15 clamshell that I purchased from 143 Vinyl. Um, it is on a stand that my husband built, but when you get the, if you go with this option, this one does get up to 400 degrees. I love it. I love the convenience of it. I love the fact that it's a clamshell and I don't have to worry about having space on um, either side of it. Um, the reason why I purchased the clamshell heat press is because I don't have a lot of space in my craft room. So if that is a concern for you, I suggest getting a clamshell. If space is not an issue, I definitely would suggest, you know, or eat, have, have you consider going with um, a swing out heat press. So a clamshell, it just means that I can raise it up and down. Okay, with the other kinds of heat press, a swing out heat press, and I'll show you, you have to swing it out to the left or right in order to remove your item. Uh, Cricut heat press, like I said, it's a very good option. It's portable. I can move from table to table. I actually like this one. It's just I needed something that would give me consistent pressure throughout without me having to give it all that pressure. This is another heat press, but I definitely say you can't use something like this, not because of the size of it, but because this one, and, and I like this little heat press, it's actually one of my favorites. This one only gets up to 356 degrees. Okay, so it does have good heat. It has excellent heat. It has an auto shut off feature. It has a lot of good features, but it doesn't get up to 400 degrees. Let me go move you over to my other table so I can show you my swing out heat. Another heat press that I have is a 15 by 15 swing out heat press this was the heat press that i used before i got the starcraft heat press i like this one a lot the only reason i needed to change it is because i didn't i don't have a lot of space so i don't know if you can tell but this one is on a very small table and i had to move it to a different area in my room in my craft room because in order to use it you have to be able to swing this plate out and i did not like having to do that because Oftentimes the workspace was either on the left or the right of my heat press and I didn't, you know, I was concerned about, you know, my items getting heated up when I didn't want them to be heated up. Um, but this is a very good heat press it's, and if space is not an issue for you, this is a, an excellent, excellent option. It is super hot, super fast. Um, it does have a pull out tray. So when you're trying to, you know, size your, make sure your fabric or your shirt is on in a good spot. It's, it's a good heat press. I just needed more space, so I needed a clamshell. So we have looked at the nine by nine easy press. We've looked at a 15 by 15 clamshell, and we've also looked at a swing out heat press. So we've looked at three different heat presses that will all reach 400 degrees or higher. So check that off. All right, number six, heat resistant tape. Let's look at some. Heat resistant tape is a matter of personal preference. Cricut makes heat resistant tape. This is the first kind that I've ever tried, um, but I have seen other crafters who use this kind. I don't actually know the name of it. I know that you can buy heat resistant tape in different colors and um, different thickness. I have tried this kind. I use this when I run out of the Cricut brand. <laughs> so it's just a matter of personal preference. I like the Cricut brand because I like the width of it. And I'm sure I could get this one in a thicker uh, tape, but I like the width of this one and I haven't ever had an issue with the tape interfering with the design or leaving any residue or 
I just, I, I prefer the Cricut brand. I have this kind, I've bought multiple rolls of it. Um, it's cheaper, I think, maybe, because I bought it in bulk, maybe because I bought three rolls, but I do prefer the Cricut brand of heat resistant tape. It doesn't matter what you, you know, which kind you choose, you just know that you will need heat resistant tape to tape your image down to whatever sublimation blank you will be using, okay? So heat resistant tape is an essential item, okay? Number seven, butcher paper or parchment paper? Let's look at, let's look at some. All right, you will need butcher paper or parchment paper if you're using the A-sub paper. Now, I've heard that there are different types of sublimation paper that don't require butcher paper. I haven't tried it. I've only tried A-sub paper. So with butcher paper, I, I like this roll right here. Um, and it's just plain white butcher paper. I guess, you know, what a butcher would use if he were wrapping, he or she would were wrapping meat. So I like this one because it comes, you know, with this cutter already in the box. The box, I can move it as much as I need to. Um, this has good, you know, thickness. It, it's not filmy. It is just plain, it's not waxed. It doesn't have a waxy side to it. I like this butcher paper a lot. As a matter of fact, if I wasn't planning <laughs> to use this one next, I would order more of this. How I wish this one would fit in this box, it won't, but that's a whole nother story. Butcher paper protects your heat press. So whenever you are getting ready to do a press on an object, let me give you an example. So let's just say I was going to, you know, put a design on this uh, heart keychain. I would put the image, my printed image, let's just say I was using this photo and I was gonna put this photo on this heart. I will put it down on my heat press and I would tape it with my heat resistant tape. I would put butcher paper on top of it. Let me fold. I, I like to fold mine, some people don't, some people do. I will put heat resist, I will put butcher paper on top of it just like this to protect my heat, the top of my heat plate so that the next time I got ready to use my um, heat press, I didn't have any ink stuck here at the top of my heat plate, okay? The, the plate. So that's what it does. It just protects the press from not getting any ink on it. That's the purpose of butcher paper. Now, like I said, this is my favorite one. I'm running low on it. So that piece that I just showed you, it's definitely not trash, it's going to be used. Again, so I'm just gonna put it down here, so for future reference, this, I purchased this big roll of butcher paper. This is 1,000 feet of butcher paper that I purchased from Sam's Club, okay? Um, I think right now it's, I think it was 25 or $26. And as you can see, I haven't opened it yet. This is the first one that I ever purchased. I bought this one back in July, and I don't even know. I don't even know how many feet this one is, but I haven't run out. And like I said, I do a lot of sublimation. So either way, you'll need butcher paper. Parchment paper is another option. Parchment paper, in my opinion, it doesn't work as well as butcher paper. I use parchment paper sometimes when I'm using um, heat transfer vinyl or I'm doing those confetti sprinkles. Uh, you definitely need it when you're using those. But I tend to stick with butcher paper. If I don't have any butcher paper, or if I'm, you know, in a in a bind and I'm trying to do something really quick, I might use this. If you don't have butcher paper or parchment paper, you could always just use plain white cardstock or white copy paper. Okay? So I can cross that off and those are the seven essential items. Sublimation printer, sublimation paper, sublimation ink, a heat press, oh, sublimation blanks. I showed you multiple, I could go on and on with those. You need a heat press that will reach 400 degrees, heat resistant tape and butcher paper or parchment paper. I definitely, you know, I would say butcher paper more than anything, but that depends on you. Now, the last thing I'll show you is just some optional items that you might consider getting if you want to get into sublimation. These things are not must-haves. These things are not, you have to have this in order to do, you don't. I have these things and I'm glad I do. And so I'm gonna show you what they look like. There are three optional items that I'm glad I have that are not necessary. Heat resistant gloves, 
because who wants to burn themselves? Not me. I have burned myself plenty of times. So um, I did invest in a pair of heat resistant gloves. They look like this. If you see me doing any sublimation videos, you will definitely see me using these because they, you know, I can pull the design, pull the item right from the heat press without the concern of burning myself. So I definitely suggest, you know, investing in a pair of those. I think those may have cost $8. A tape dispenser. There's a video that I did recently where I dropped the tape, I want to say three or four times. <laughs> and I have to laugh at myself. I didn't get frustrated because really I should have just been using the tape dispenser. This tape dispenser is the only one that I found that fits the Cricut brand of heat resistant tape. Now that other heat resistant tape, there are tape dispensers that you can purchase that will fit. I didn't find one. I wasn't able to find one. What I like about this one is that you clip it, you know, you can just clip it right to the table. So let me see if I can show you that. Okay, so you see it's clipped to my table. So when I'm using the heat press, I mean, when I'm using my heat resistant tape, the tape is clipped right there to the table. Actually, I had it upside down, but um, yeah. So just like that, and I can pull the tape and continue using it. All right, so that is another optional item. All right, and then the last thing, this is optional, but I think it is the best thing. Um, having your USB directly connected to your device. Oftentimes when you are doing a sublimation print, I have heard people say that my, you know, the printer stopped right in the middle of the design. And what happens when, when that happens to you, you'll have half of the design printed and now that's trash. So you've wasted ink, you've wasted paper, you've wasted time. You might even have wasted a few, you know, expletives because you're now you're frustrated. What I have done is I purchased a USB cord that is directly, let me just unplug it for one second, that is directly connected to my, so here's the, here's one end of it. It's directly connected to my computer. So when I'm using my computer, let me close this out. Um, when I'm using my computer, I have my um, printer connected to the computer so I don't ever have to worry about, you know, losing my design or losing the image or wasting ink or wasting paper because it's directly connected. Even though I can connect this via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or whatever, and I don't have to have a cord at all, I prefer to keep the printer connected above everything else. So I don't even have my keyboard connected but I have my, <laughs> I have my printer connected. All right. So hopefully this video was helpful for you. Hopefully, you know, going through each of these items and seeing what some options are will be helpful for you as you're considering getting into sublimation. It is not a hard process. It's not as confusing or as complicated as a lot of people make it seem. Um, I do have a Facebook group. It is called Cricut Crafting with Delonda. We would love for you to join us over there. Um, it is a very helpful group. And, you know, if you're ready to get into sublimation or even just ready to open your box, there are plenty of people in that group who will help you get started with that process. At any rate, thank you so much for joining me today. And thanks for watching.